a lump that appears pretty suddenly is cause for enough concern as it is. But when you add on top of that the fact that Pretty is 42 years old, which is really middle to late age for Galaz, yeah, we've got reason to be concerned. You know, I don't normally take time out of the clinic to go and visit art galleries, but today there's a pretty good reason. My saviour of the day, Chris. <laughs> How are you? Oh man, good to see you. Very good Pressure to see you. Pressure on too early, right? No, 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 but hey man, anything that's going to help my bird is fantastic for me, so. Uh. Chris is responding to a call for help from local gallery owner, Maurizio. This is Dr Chris. Hey Pretty. You say hello? <laughs> His best friend Pretty the Galar has suddenly developed an unusual growth and Maurizio is concerned. Now you're worried about this lump, is that the story? On the right leg there, yeah. The moment I lay my eyes on Pretty, straight away, I can see the lump. It's a big size. And we're yeah. talking about sort of that size. Yeah, exactly. That it's size a, it's a few centimetres. It's confusing the hell out of me. OK, but it has come up fairly quickly. It's only in the last three months. How old is he now? He was 42 around uh, September last year, so he's going on 43. 43. Wow. 43, yeah. I've had him since I was 11 years old. Jeez. Old story. It's a big old part of your story. life then. A huge part of my life. He's been with me the whole time, every uh, every day. I, I literally talk to him over the phone if I'm away. Someone will hold a, a phone to him and, yeah, he's, uh, he's a big part of the family. There are a couple of things that worry me. He is getting on. Yeah. And look, in the same way as in people, the older they get, the more likely you are to have, I guess, more serious health problems. Exactly, issues. So, look, I think probably that the best thing is to get in there with him. Mm -hmm. Need to get a good look at that lump, yeah, but also, importantly, get a feel of that lump too. Exactly, yeah. Exactly, yeah. A lump that appears pretty suddenly is cause for enough concern as it is. But when you add on top of that the fact that Pretty is 42 years old, which is really middle to late age for Galaz, yeah, we've got reason to be concerned. Seeing the lump that's formed in the amount, in the quick time that it has, uh, it concerns me a hell of a lot. It's okay. Baby. Good chat. It's okay. There's no denying it. To truly assess what is going on with this lump, I need to get in there and have a good look for myself. Baby. Baby. Given the fact that Pretty hasn't been handled for a number of years, it's not going to be easy. Oh! <laughs> it's got the dominant position. Hasn't he? Hasn't If anyone gets close enough to him, he very much defends himself. It's going to be very interesting. See, Freddie, what you don't realise is that I brought in my number one bird <laughs> controlling device. <laughs> Currently, everything is in Pretty's favour. He's got the height advantage, he knows all the hiding spots, and he's got a pretty sharp beak. You ever feel like it backs up against yeah. the wall, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> but what he doesn't realise is I've got the towel. Let go, let go. Good boy, good boy. So we just keep you nice and relaxed there, buddy. <laughs> With Pretty beginning to fret, Chris has to work fast. Even though I've successfully managed to catch Pretty, the fact is we cannot delay this examination. It has to be done quickly because stress for a 42-year-old bird could be fatal. We're looking at about three centimetres by three centimetres. It's movable. Yep. See that? Yep. Looking at it, it is, it is a tumour. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. So probably the most important thing is, is to get a sample of that. The chances of me being able to catch pretty again are pretty small, so everything has to be done right now, including taking a sample of that lump. Oh, there we go. Good boy. It's all over. Huh? You okay? Hopefully in that sample there'll be enough to tell us exactly what type of cell is sitting in that lump. Sure. And from there we, we know what we're dealing with. After feeling this lump, I've got no doubt that it is a tumour, but what kind of tumour and what this tumour really means to Pretty and Maurizio is still a mystery. Have a look down here. Yeah. So just picking up this. Yeah. This is all his food scraps. Yes. It's all everything that he's eaten. If you go through it all, mm -hmm. sunflower seed, yeah. sunflower seed. He is having breakfast, lunch, dinner, sunflower seeds. Yeah, mostly. Yeah. So this is important. 
and this may actually be relating back to what we're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that sample back mm -hmm. to the vet clinic. Sure. We're going to analyse that. Mm -hmm. But I've got a funny feeling right now that what's in my hand is, part of that. is as big a deal as what's in that syringe. All right. So I'll let you know as soon Mate. as I have some news. Thank you. Okay. Very much appreciate it. I'll see you soon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if he wants to see you soon, but... I'm not going to make eye contact with him right now. Just, no, he's we're just... clearly not talking. I'm always optimistic, but um, he is a bird of a certain age. Uh, but I am worried about it, definitely, yes. Alright, let's see what we've got. Really, when you're dealing with a 42-year-old bird, I guess anything is possible when it comes to a lump. So, I'm nervous because we just don't really know what we're dealing with here and there's a lot of emotion at play. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is about to test the cell sample taken from Pretty the Galar. It looks like a kid's science project, but what I'm doing is actually using different coloured stains to essentially illuminate different parts of this sample. By doing that, I get a clearer picture about what's happening. OK, let's take a look. That's interesting. So wherever I go, I'm seeing two things. Red blood cells, which are obviously meant to be there, but these white looking cells, and they are everywhere. And even though they look like they're thousands of bubbles of nothing, they are something. And what they are is fat cells. And right now, that's all we need to know. Pretty, look who's here. Hey, pretty. Il dottore. Hello. How are you? In Wallara, Maurizio is about to find out what the future holds for his best mate of 42 years, Pretty the Galar. So, I do the results from that sample we took. It is a lipoma. Essentially, Pretty has a lump there that's made up of fat cells. Okay. Now, that can continue to grow, yeah. and it can get to the point where it starts to affect his life. <coughs> What's happening is that he's eating like a king. Mm. He's eating sunflower seeds day in, day out. They're all Which over the base of his cage there. That's right. Nice which are 30, 40% fat. Yep. So for him, he's eating all the calories he can possibly squeeze into that little body of his, but he's doing nothing about burning them off. About burning them off. Mm. And what happens in a glass body when they get to this sort of stage is they actually start to produce these fatty lumps, almost out of desperation as a way of sending the fat somewhere. So I could get in there now and operate, remove this lump. But he's 42 years old. Mm. What I think is going to be as effective is doing something else. So <clears throat> this is essentially the best medicine we can buy for pretty right now. Yeah. Take these. Jeez. Silver beet. And spinach. Wow. Wonder drug. Some kale. Kale. All right. So. Oh, good. That is going to be what keeps him happy during the day. Not happy with this. And now one thing I have to ask you too, let, let's fragrance sex, not fragrance sex, he loves his pasta. He loves pasta. Tell me this. <laughs> he really loves pasta. Maurizio is now telling me everything that he's ever fed pretty. It's like some sort of confessional. And it's shocking. So what else does he love? He likes steak too. He likes the fat off the steak as well. If I can give him sort of spinach and ricotta and lotti, he doesn't mind it, but he likes a good um, veal tortellini. Baby, tell him, do you like pasta? <coughs> tell him, it's not my fault. Will you say something in my defense, please? Mm. <laughs> the tricky thing here is that Maurizio truly believes that he's been doing the right thing for Pretty by giving him what he sees as being a balanced diet. But there's no other way of looking at it. Pretty and Maurizio have ultimately been feeding this tumor. So he's going to eat himself skinny with this correct diet. He's not going to like me. He's going to get dessert spoon <coughs> of millet. <coughs> Stalk there. Pretty's path to enlightenment is pretty simple. A dessert spoon of millet twice a day, and then green veggies, kale, silver beet, spinach, readily available. Do those, and Pretty will be sitting pretty. It's just hard to imagine going from pasta, can 
cannoli, steak, fish, chicken, nuts, fruit, to what? Three different types of grass, basically. And a little bit of millet seed. I, it's going to be very interesting. Very, very interesting. But the reality is simple. Unless Maurizio stops feeding pretty fatty food and puts him on a strict diet, the senior citizen won't survive. You have to promise me, no matter how much he complains, no matter how much he talks to you, no matter how much he probably mm, asks, and he will. possibly in Italian, for pasta, <laughs> exactly. you cannot give in. Because if you give in, you shorten no. his life. Yeah, exactly. Well, look. <laughs> Whatever needs to be done, uh, needs to be done, as you said. You know, it, it'd be ridiculous to take his life to this extent and not let him live it out. Mm. Did he just go... It's a bit of a, you know, an Italian thing when you sort of go, uh, yeah, maybe, huh? What's going on? Oh, it's going to be difficult. It's definitely going to be difficult, but... Difficult versus health. And, and life, there's going to be no comparison between the two. So I have to do something about it, and we are. This Italian-Australian is now eating salad. Pretty's already diving headfirst into his new diet and his life plan. But I really feel like the big test here is Maurizio. If he can not give in to temptation, if he can stay strong, then we've got a real hope of shrinking his tumour. Ta -da. Ta -da, ta -da, buddy. Ta -da. You know, I don't think anyone enjoys being on a diet, but with Pretty, the hope was it would actually help him avoid a surgery. I'm just not sure he's going to appreciate that fact. You find out you haven't been eating your grains, you know what you're going to get, don't you? More biopsies. It's been four months since Chris last saw Pretty and Maurizio. Hey, Dr. Chris. <laughs> how are you? Good, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm not, I'm not checking up, but I am <laughs> checking up. Now Chris is back to see whether these two best mates have stuck to the prescribed diet and whether the tumour on Pretty's leg has shrunk. Pretty used to be on a diet of almost everything. But the highlights? Cashews, pasta, ravioli, sunflower seeds, salami. Now, just kale, spinach, silver beet and millet. I think you look amazing. I just want to prove it to myself. Okay. There's not much of a swelling there that is in his leg. Whereas before, there was a real separation where you it had was a big, yeah. thick bubble coming up. But it was, I mean, it was huge before. Mm -hmm. He looks healthier. You know, we think that healthy living has its advantages. Eat your greens. <laughs> Even for someone like me who works with animals all the time, I find it amazing that you can actually shrink down a tumour just by using the right food but it's exactly what's happened with Pretty. It's great news for both Pretty and Maurizio. As hard as it has been to, to stick to this diet, and I'm very happy, obviously, that I've seen the tumour go down myself. Well, I'm happy because he's going to have a longer life yep. and hopefully a better quality of life. Chris, thank you. I do much. appreciate it very much. Good luck. For Maurizio and Pretty, they've been together for 42 years, and thankfully, this simple change in his diet could give them 42 more years. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content. And if you love Bondi Vet, then check out our Bondi Pet Marketplace at bondipet.com for a great range of Aussie pet products and services. We can't wait to see you there.